All right, welcome. My name is Jonathan Stoddard and I'm with KTG and today I'm going to be covering how to automatically back up your website with cPanel. Before I get into the how, I just want to cover briefly the why. Now, certainly a lot of us make backups, but I found few people actually back up their websites. And probably the biggest reason why you want to do this is because you use some sort of login to access your website. Now, if you have a bad password on there, or someone really wants to hack your website, they might be able to figure out your login and password, and then go in and delete stuff. And now you've lost your site. Now, again, also, we're all human, so it might not be a hacker, but you might accidentally delete something. And with both those cases, if you don't have a backup, you don't have a way to restore your site, and that can be a huge blow to a small business if they lose their website. So to start off you should be on this page on the KTG website which is how to create automatic backups of your website. And the first step is to download this website underscore backup dot php and you want to use a text editor. I use text wrangler which is a app for the Mac. You can also use text edit or if you're a Windows user, you can use Notepad. Uh, don't use Microsoft Word because that'll probably mess up the file. The next step is to edit the code. And what we have here is a, a file that might be a little daunting. Uh, it's computer code. And uh, if you follow my directions, though, go step by step. I'm confident you'll be able to figure this out. So the first thing we need to do is put in your own information for CP user and CP pass. When you first signed up for web hosting, you were given a username and password to access something called the cPanel, which is used by a lot of web hosting companies. And it looks something like this, okay? Uh, you got all these options here. What you need to do is when you got that first email or you know, maybe from a guy who set up your website, uh, you need to get that username and password. And you need to then replace the default text with that username and password. So in between the quotes, and I'll just make one up here, J.R. Stoddard, which is my first uh, middle initial and then my last name, and a password. Here's an example of a bad password, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? The next thing is put in your domain. So this is the domain of your website. Uh, no www, just the domain. So for me, it's ktgdenver.com, okay? Next is the skin, uh, and to figure out what skin you're using, X3 is the default, and so you probably don't need to change this, but you should double check by logging into the cPanel, and if you go down here on the side, on the left-hand side, you've got all these uh, pieces of information, and there's one here called theme, and you see it says X3, okay? If it says X3, you don't need to do anything. If it says something different, you just need to change this variable to match whatever it says in there. I'm going to skip FTP host, skip this part, and go to notification information. I like to get an email to know that my backup completed. And you probably do too. So within here, the begin between the quotes, just type in your email address. Uh, and there's mine. Okay? And that's all we need to do. That was editing the code. Uh, not too bad. We're going to save it. Now we need to upload it to our website. And the way you do that is use an FTP client. If you use a Mac, um, I've got one called Cyberduck, which is free, and that's a pretty handy tool. And there's also some free ones for Windows users. And you need to now connect to your website via the FTP uh, account that you were given. And you start in this home directory, which is called Slash. And you can see that I've created a directory called Backups. And in there I put my uh, backup script is what we'll call it. Now website underscore backup dot php. So you just need to upload it somewhere, either in that home directory or create a directory called backups and put it in there. Make sure you do not put it in www. Do not put it in public underscore html. Do not put it in public underscore ftp. Okay. So now we've uploaded it and we're going to test the cron job. Okay, and cron is simply a utility for Linux that allows you to automate tasks. And I'm going to click up here in find cron and it'll automatically find it over here. Uh, if you don't see that find function, just search for it in the the window and you'll find it. And we're going to click advanced unix style cron job. And it takes us to this. Now I already have the cron job in there. 
but um, you'll need to put it in there. And, and so the first thing to do is the command part, okay? Uh, which is this guy right here. And if you go back to the site, I've got the information right here under uh, number four, which is set up the cron job. Basically just copy this, okay? We'll copy it. And then you wanna paste it into this line right here. Now you're gonna need to change a few things. Uh, if you notice I've got, it says uh, a bracket cPanel username, okay? That needs to match up with the information you put right here for CP user. So whatever that username is, you need to take that and replace the brackets and put it in there. So here you can see slash home slash ktgdsto9. That's my username. Now if we go back to the FTP client, I remember how I put this website backup.php in slash, which is up here near the top. Backups is the folder. Website backup, okay? And you just need to make sure that in your cron job that matches up. So I've got slash backups and then website underscore backup.php. Okay, it all matches. Now I want to test it out. And the way its scheduling works is over here on the left hand side. And I'm going to check the time real quick. So we see that it is right now it is 12.01. Um, and I want to change the minute. So I'm going to do, say, 12.03. And I'm going to change this to a star real quick. And a star means every single instance of whatever that time unit is. So if I put a star in the hour, that means every single hour. If I put a star in the minute, that means every single minute. A star in the day, every single day, and so on, OK? I'm going to hit commit changes and uh, that's working and basically that's telling the system all right every single uh, hour run this command so it says cron updated I'm going to click go back go back to the cron job just so I can see it and here we go so on the third minute of every hour and every day of every month of every weekday this backup command is going to run. Alright, so now I'm waiting and I'm checking the time. It says 12.02, so I've got a little less than a minute. And what I should see happen is pop up in my email a uh, email saying that, hey, the backup ran and we'll see if we got any errors or not. While that's going, I am pretty confident that I got all this correct. So I'm going to go ahead and schedule the cron job for a once a day backup, which is um, sufficient for most everyone. You want to schedule it for some time when your website's not used very often, so I'm just going to put a 2 in the hour block for basically on the third minute of the second hour of every day of every month of every weekday um, I want to run this backup, okay? Now I've got that all set up. It looks good. I'm going to hit commit changes and now I've got the daily backup set up. Now before I get too confident, I check, all right, it's 12.03 p.m. I'm going to check my email, and up oh, there we go. I've got an email here. I'll zoom in so we can see it some. Full backup completed from the cPanel, and there's all kinds of information, and it can be a little confusing, but the big piece is this last uh, line here, almost the last line. This shows the file where my backup is stored. And if I want to double check that, which again, it's a good idea. I go back to my FTP client and I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to click refresh and it refreshed it. Now I should see I've got all these, you can see I've got all these backups in here. Uh, I'm going to look for today's date. So six. Okay, here we go. I've got a couple today. So scroll down. Backup for 6 26 2009 at now the time zone is a little different depending on where your web server is located, but I, it's, this happened on the third minute. There's the file. Okay. Now I've got the backup. So if I want to, uh, let's say I ever need to use the backup, it's a zipped file. I can just double click it and it downloads it. And within there is all of my website files, all of my databases, every single thing from my website that I can very easily get that uh, restored. Okay. So that is how to create a backup of your website. Uh, if you have questions, always you can always email me. 
and thank you for watching.